Welcome to video seven in the CCTE data center series. In this video, we are going to describe SAN technologies. So what is a SAN? Uh, SAN stands for Storage Area Network. The SAN is a dedicated, high-speed, resilient network that is designed to connect a shared pool of storage devices and make them available to hosts and servers. A SAN also has any-to-any -any communication. Uh, and what this means is that a host can communicate with a variety of storage devices. They're not locked into just one. Uh, it also means that end devices can access the, the SAN and utilize storage without having to go through a server first. What I have here is a picture that I got off of the Cisco support forums. Uh, so some of these model numbers on the equipment themselves uh, is gonna be a little bit last gen, uh, but it's a great picture to demonstrate, um, you know, really the architecture of what's going on with the SAN within the uh, enterprise network. All right, so you can see over here on the left-hand side, you've got the LAN, um, and then the like some sort of aggregation device or, or core device on the LAN is going to connect to the UCS uh, 6120XP, which is a fabric interconnect. Um, and then connecting up to uh, the fabric interconnect is going to be a UCS B-series chassis that we have right here. Um, and then the fabric interconnect also has a fiber channel link over to the SAN uh, and a MDS9124. Uh, uh, which then also connects via fiber channel to a storage array. And so to relate this to some of the topics we were discussing on the previous slide with the any-to-any -any communication, um, an application that's over here residing on the B-series can access multiple storage arrays. Now in this picture, we only have one storage array, but there could be uh, you know, different types of storage. Um, and an app, the same application over here in the B-series could use different types of storage array that wouldn't be locked into just one. Um, and then also people over here, like end users on the LAN or um, applications that people have on their desktops can also uh, come through, they would come through the Fabric Interconnect and into the SAN um, you know, and access storage directly. Um, you know, there's stuff like file shares. Um, they wouldn't have to go up through an application in the server and then you know, access the storage. The, uh, another way of saying it is that the servers themselves are not gateways for the storage. All right, SAN characteristics, uh, the first of which is isolated network. So the SAN is a dedicated network for a singular purpose. Uh, we can look at this uh, in this picture. Uh, this is a good illustration of this. So you can see that we have the LAN over here. Um, and then, you know, the UCS servers that are over here, they all come through the Fabric Interconnect. And then the Fabric Interconnect leads off into the SAN, which is its own separate infrastructure. And it's really important that the SAN is its own infrastructure because then it's unaffected by LAN issues. So if, an, if some equipment goes down in the LAN, uh, then, you know, storage could be completely out, which is, which is really, really bad. Um, applications behave very poorly. Uh, and virtual machines behave very poorly if there's failure in the storage. Uh, next, we have the challenge of the SAN is to have a lossless, low latency, resilient network. So the first component of that, losslessness, the ability to read and write data to and from a disk without dropping packets. Um, and it kind of ties into the idea of having the isolated network, right? So that nothing else could affect it and drop packets. All right, so the next characteristic is latency. Uh, with respect to storage, latency means the delay in read and write operations. Now, if you're going to compare and contrast uh, a SAN to storage directly on the server, storage on the server is going to have a natural latency advantage over storage located across the network. Uh, we'll go back to the other picture to illustrate this. All right, so if we're looking at having storage directly right there on the UCS servers, which is where the applications are running, um, it's not going to take as much time to have those read-write operations happen as if they were... Uh, located over here in the storage array, because then the read and write operations have to go through the fabric interconnect, then across the SAN, over to the storage, and then all the way back. So naturally, latency is going to have an advantage for uh, on-server storage. And my last point here is some applications have very specific latency requirements. So if it's one of these low latency applications that just cannot tolerate a lot of latency, you might want to think about using on-server storage for it. So the last SAN characteristic that we're going to talk about here is resiliency, which can be defined as the ability to tolerate device failure in the network. And as we've been discussing, uh, SAN failures have a big impact on VMs and applications, so it's critical that the SAN network is resilient.
All right, we have different types or, or different levels of SAN devices here. So SAN routers would forward IP-based SAN traffic between SAN segments. SAN switches transfer data between servers and storage and device arrays. Uh, and then SAN directors are used only in large SAN environments. Uh, the SAN directors are going to be the MDS 9700 series. Actually, let's go take a look at those. All right, so here I've Googled the Cisco MDS 9700 series. I mean, as you can see, uh, they can go as large as this, have these large chassis-based systems. So when I say that they can go into large systems, that uh, would be a device just used for a very large storage area network. Layers of the SAN infrastructure. So for this, this is pertaining to the layers of the actual network itself. Uh, so the host layers, which is where the physical hosts, AKA the servers are uh, that consume the storage. Uh, the fabric layer, which is where the SAN switches are that transfer the data between the servers and the storage array, which is also the MDS switches. Um, and then the storage layer, which is where the storage devices and the, array, and the arrays are located. All right, so now we're back on that picture that we were looking at before just to demonstrate where the three different layers are. All right, so right here we have the, the UCS B-Series chassis. So this is where the servers are, where the hosts are. So the physical hosts are right here. So that would be the host layer. Um, and then we have this cloud right here and the MDS9124. This is going to be the fabric layer. And then we have the storage array over here, which is going to be the storage layer, of course. All right, so now we're going to move on and talk about the SAM protocols a little bit. We're not going to go too in-depth, but you do need to know the fundamentals, kind of the, the basic facts about the different SAM protocols that are out there. The first of which is going to be SCSI, which SCSI, Small Computer Systems Interface. Now, this is a set of standards for physically connecting and transferring data between computers and peripheral devices. Uh, this is the protocol that actually delivers the read and write commands to the storage disks. It was initially developed for directly attached peripheral devices like on store or on server um, things, but it's evolved into a point-to-point -point communications protocol. Uh, Scudly is, wi is widely used and the base for the rest of the SAM protocols. Examples would be SAS drives and fiber channel. Okay, so the next one is going to be a fiber channel protocol. It's the most uh, popular, especially with the Cisco SAM. Uh, it does not use uh, IP TCP. It's a completely different protocol. Uh, so the next one is going to be uh, FCIP, FCIP, which is fiber channel over IP. Now this does use the TCP IP uh, protocol stack. It, it uses tunnels to connect with the fiber channel SANs. So it, encapsulated, it encapsulates the fiber channel frames and sends them across IP networks. Uh, and this is used to connect geographically separated fiber channel SANs. Uh, and the important thing to remember about FCIP is that it uses tunnels. So if it's asking about a storage protocol uh, that uses tunnels, uh, just remember that is FCIP. So after FCIP, we have IFCP, which is Internet Fiber Channel Protocol. Uh, so this is a TCP IP based protocol. It came out after FCIP and does not use tunnels. Uh, this is a gateway to gateway protocol that is used to connect fiber channel devices or fiber channel SANs to existing infrastructure. It's designed to use the TCP IP network's transport services uh, and send fiber channel data on the transport connections provided by TCP. So both FCIP and IFCP are designed to have fiber channel SANs communicate with each other you know, across geographically dispersed distances. But the thing you need to remember is that FCIP uses tunnels and that IFCP is a gateway to gateway protocol. So that's how you differentiate the two. All right, our last SAN protocol is gonna be fiber channel over ethernet. Uh, so what fiber channel over ethernet does is it, encapsulate, it encapsulates fiber channel protocol in the ethernet frame to transmit over ethernet networks. This means that you can use ethernet switches. Uh, you can use the, the high speed ethernet switches for your fiber channel network. Uh, so unlike IFCP and FCIP and iSCSI, the fiber channel over Ethernet encapsulation runs on top of Ethernet at layer two, so there's no IP routing. Uh, so fiber channel over Ethernet was kind of a big, um, how do I say this? It was kind of a big innovation in that it allows fiber channel and Ethernet to share the same integrated infrastructure. Um, this brings a lot of design simplicity and cost savings. Um, so if, if you can imagine that uh, a large section of the data center operates off of Ethernet and then a large 
uh, you know, and then if you have a completely separate SAN network that cannot be Ethernet, it's a lot more infrastructure in the data center. You're talking, uh, you know, a lot more devices, especially for large systems, you're talking a lot more devices in the data center, um, which adds to both cost and the complexity of management. All right, that concludes the SAN fundamentals video. Um, if this was helpful, give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.